You've seen it so many times now that you don't even think about it, but what is MIP scale? In this quick tip, I'm going to show you what MIP scale does. MIP stands for multi and parvo, which basically means that there are a lot of texture pixels in one small area of the render. MIP scale is applied globally to all default textures, but can be fine-tuned in the basic properties of the texture in any material channel. Simply put, the purpose of this or any filter is to some degree blur a texture as it moves away from the camera in order to avoid fancy jittery pixels and the uh, Moyer pattern. Those uh, weird cross hatchy patterns that uh, show up when, uh, when we render sometimes. This MIP blurred texture is then calculated by anti-aliasing to further smooth the texture and color values. Now the default MIP scale value is 50% and that means that basically there's half MIP strength applied to all loaded textures. If we increase the MIP scale, then the texture will become more blurred. And if we use negative values, the texture will become more sharp, but this will create more artifacts when we render. Basically, a positive value increases the blur, a negative value weakens it. A strong value blurs detail, but helps prevent flickering during animation, while a weaker value brings out more detail, but increases the risk of flickering. So 0% means there is no MIP blur applied. MIP scale also affects the SAT filter, which is similar to MIP, except that it is a higher quality texture filter and also takes a little longer to render. I hope this has shed some light on MIP blur scale and now all you need to do is experiment with this in your animations to find what works in helping you avoid flickering jittery textures. If you're interested in personalized training or project assistance, visit cineversityoneonone.com and visit cineversity.com for more great tutorials and resources.